Now in this video we're going to look at this circuit. We have an NPN bipolar junction transistor and it's wired as a switch. Right now it's not getting a base signal and uh, so the transistor is off. If we give a small current from our base to emitter, now the transistor is on and I have high enough value components here. We can put it up to uh, 12 volts which uh, will make the LED brighter. It looks a little bit better. But in any case, the main thing is we also have a capacitor here so it charged instantly when that uh, LED turned on and there you can see that uh, when I remove the uh, power from the power supply now the capacitor actually has a little bit of current that kept the transistor on for a while so it was on fully for a bit and as the capacitor voltage dropped down current dropped down then it still had more current going through the load than was being provided by the capacitor but it wasn't as much as the load wanted for the supply voltage so the LED dimmed over time. Here is pretty close to spot on the uh, circuit that I had on the board instead of a push button switch though I just used a jumper instead of closing a switch I just moved the jumper to the positive supply and instead of releasing the switch I unplugged it from the positive supply. Also it's uh, a good idea if you're unfamiliar with this circuit to take a voltage measurement of what the capacitor is doing that is pretty interesting so I may or may not uh, do that but in uh, any case oscilloscope is better than a multimeter because it's a changing voltage but in any case being aware of that voltage is very important so we have the NPN bipolar junction transistor the heart of the circuit there's the uh, schematic symbol right there and there is the uh, pin layout so collector is this line right there without the arrow then we got the arrow down here the emitter they're separated but to the uh, base by a bar and so the base is on its own side right there and here's the pin layout I'm using the 2N 3904 flat side left pin emitter middle pin base right side uh, collector and uh, when you're looking at the flat side there's other transistors that uh, will have different pin layouts make sure you check the uh, data sheet but if it's a bipolar junction transistor and starts with 2N it should have that pin layout so in any case we have uh, the collector here the load and so the transistor will be on fully that's when the load sets the current that's called saturated right there so you need a load that uh, can handle the voltage you're gonna apply right there so we're gonna take an LED if we use 12 volts we want at least a thousand ohms of resistance protecting that LED from 12 volts lower voltages you can go down but I just used the 1k there should work uh, this range of voltage pretty nicely now when it comes to the base that's what sets how much current goes from collector to emitter it has a gain the transistor does for every milliamp or a fraction of a milliamp of current going from base to emitter maybe it'll let a hundred milliamps go from collector to emitter maybe 300 so if it has a gain of a hundred that means a hundred times will go from collector to emitter as is going through base to emitter so it's not terribly reliable and uh, different transistors have a different range of gain and whatnot the main thing is a small current is letting a lot of current go through so you just have to make sure that uh, you have a worst case scenario that uh, you put enough current here that at least a hundred times going through collector emitter will be enough so the capacitor when we close the switch two things happen the capacitor charges instantly as long as the power supply can provide that much current instantly but in case capacitor charges instantly and current flows through the uh, resistor the base and emitter based on uh, the amount of current is based on the value of the capacitor there 10 kilo ohms usually works out uh, fairly nicely in these circuits uh, but you can adjust it a bit but in case switch is closed the transistor is on fully thanks to we got enough current through a 10 kilo ohm resistor and uh, the capacitor charges instantly right there we open the switch the capacitor is kinda like a little rechargeable battery it uh, gets charges across its plates and a voltage across it and that's uh, stored energy right there we release the switch then it can provide those charges through the circuit kinda like a mini rechargeable battery and uh, so actually at that point we have a separate power source controlling the base to emitter a weaker one than what is uh, powering from collector to emitter and so that's the nice thing about uh, bipolar junction transistors 
is that you can have a separate power source uh, controlling the transistor but it's uh, controlling from a different uh, power source so in any case the capacitor will uh, discharge as it discharges its voltage goes down it pushes less current through the resistor until it drops to about 0.7 volts because that's what is needed from base to emitter right there so in any case if we use larger values for one or both of these then it's going to take longer for the transistor to you know start slowing down how much current goes through it slow down uh, its fade and because we got either more charge and or it's letting less of those charges go through right there so when it is in that middle region where the LED is not fully on it's not fully off that's called the active region right there the transistor is actively limiting how much current goes through it and then when it's off completely that's cut off as we said before saturated is when the transistor is conducting fully right there so again the main thing is that just a little bit of base current allows a lot of uh, collector current right there so if we tried to just power the LED with a capacitor especially a hundred microfarad capacitor and a thousand ohm resistor it's gonna turn off extremely quickly whereas as we saw in the demonstration it took time for it to fade down and uh, so the transistor it's taken a little bit of uh, power from the capacitor and providing a lot of power from the load to extend the effects right there and uh, as always don't exceed the uh, power and current rating of uh, any components if you're going by a data sheet then probably you have uh, values or part numbers written on there you can just use them it should be safe to use those values or part numbers but they could also make a mistake so it's still a good idea to uh, look up the data sheets of the power handling capabilities of components as much as possible so now we're back to the board thousand ohm resistor I grabbed a blue LED this time though long lead anode more positive short lead cathode more negative when it lights up and I make sure you put it the right way or else it won't light up and uh, blue LEDs are just naturally brighter even at lower current than uh, red LEDs so we got the flat side of the 2N3904 emitter to the left or bottom now base in the middle and collector to the right or top in this case and a 10,000 ohm resistor right here again we can adjust this to change the effect a little bit but uh, 10 kilo ohm worked pretty good and we got a 100 microfarad capacitor coming to our jumper that we're using as a makeshift switch and I'm going to push that over and uh, we'll zoom back so really quickly we will show the uh, fade effect with the uh, blue LED and the problem is the uh, power is off right there you can see we got it set to uh, 7 volts and uh, so that's the first thing you should look at when a circuit doesn't work make sure the power's on so power should be on now and uh, no it's not there we go and uh, I wasn't looking I just hit the button and didn't do it right so in any case there's the LED on you're gonna see it fade off over time so this jumper here I have an alligator clip from the oscilloscope clipped it to the jumper and then uh, the uh, red one we have up here we're looking at the power supply voltage which uh, since it's ground on both sides zero volt right there what's more interesting is the lowest voltage of the capacitor so we're going to go to the capacitor and there you can see it's probably about 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts approximately right there and uh, that's because the uh, base two emitter doesn't let current flow through it below about 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts so the capacitor is limited to how much it can discharge now we're going to uh, pull back and look what happens right when we oops that's the wrong one right when we connect our uh, makeshift switch here to the positive supply you can see the voltage jumped right to 7 volts and so maybe it delayed a little bit because something kind of slowed down the uh, current that could go to the capacitor for one thing we have a limit to how much current I have the power supply outputting but for the most part it uh, jumped right to 7 volts and you can see we got less current going through the entire circuit than we did with the red LED and uh, the blue LED is just uh, still brighter even with less current now we will look at when we remove the switch so it uh, 
that's the capacitor voltage so it went down quickly but the blue LED stayed uh, really really bright for a long time and now it's dimming as the uh, voltage of the capacitor drops so you can see it goes rapidly so even as you increase the voltage by a lot the capacitor voltage is gonna plummet really quickly so the timing won't be terribly affected by using a higher uh, voltage supply but the LED will get brighter so that was looking at the capacitor let's look at the voltage across the uh, resistor so that's the supply voltage now and uh, the resistor and the LED will go to the LED so you can see there's a little bit of voltage there uh, built up and noise uh, but uh, pretty much there's uh that's because we have the uh, transistor right there we're not connected to ground we're not looking at a voltage in relationship to ground but the main thing is when we connect to the positive supply now you see that seven volts again across the uh, LED right there and resistor the two of them and then uh, we remove this and now you're gonna see it's staying at seven volts and now it's trickling down over time right there hopefully you're able to see that uh, plenty fine and then we get this uh, little area right here where it's kind of confused because of the uh, voltages across the board but uh, when the LED is out completely it takes uh, more than uh, 3 volts for it to conduct so it's kind of building up just uh, weak voltages but uh, in any case hopefully that makes sense Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I post to the screen. And uh, check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.